Welcome back to the race. This is week 72, day 6. Let's take a look at our defenses. Alright, um, we got one success, but it was under lift loss control, which is kind of weird. Because this was, by the time we got hit with this one, uh, we should have been outside our lift loss control, but I guess we'll only get one more fight this week and we have gotten plenty of wins but literally the only two losses that count the the only two losses that we got are the two losses that counts so watch it be the final fight that we get also be the one that counts so we lose max points but let's just take a look So here we have Altina, base Altina with reposition and brace and attack rest. Duo Hector, smite, chill rest. Very interesting, especially since the only rest unit over here is Azura. We have Layla, uh, partnered with Cronia. That's for her is actually important. Plus three flowers, life and death four, disarm trap, savage blow, attack smoke, moonball, reposition. Plus ten, plus five, Cronia, with Mumbo, close counter, special fighter, I mean special spiral, double savage blow. And legendary Azura, with Mumbo, blue dual flying, wings of mercy, attack tactics, and guidance. All right, so let's take a look how they do. We can see this All right. Take their first turn to just break stuff. Do my damage. They have no healing. Oh, they also lost their ball tower. I forgot to mention that. It's kind of important on Trasier teams. So here they're just setting up. Turn 3. Alright. Send Altina over there to get hit by a ball trap. Now they're bringing her, her back. But it's already turn 5 and they still haven't made a move. So, turn 6. They activate Duo Hector's Duo ability. And they go against Lucina. All right, they already know that that's not real trap, so. Get everybody out of the way. And turn seven. Leila takes a Roy. And that's it. They, they give up. They wasted... They wasted six turns setting up. And then... By the time they just time out. I mean, we timed out yesterday too, so it's... It happens. Alright, so let's go for it. We have Lex with a Fjorm. I love Fjorm. We have a Leaf. Um, Hardy Bearing Leaf. I guess to prevent Vantage. Because really there is no reason for Leaf to be wearing Hardy Bearing. And Pivot. Duma. Swap. Chill Speed. Fjorm. With base kid, sturdy blow, reposition. 
Trasier with Brush Assault. Brush Assault? Again, some minus speed, I guess. Uh, Hurid with Warding Stance, Attack Smoke, and Reposition. And finally, Legendary Azura with Mumbo, War Flyers, and Turn Dance. War Flyers, but there are no Flyers in this team. Alright. So, um, I, except for Hreed, there's literally no one that can kill Sothis in this team. And I guess we could bait Hreed if we destroy these two things. Oh. This is a plus a level 6 Dark Shrine, so... It would behoove us to get rid of it. And I would like to take out Azura. Oh. So, we do have Cronia. So, we can send Cronia up this way, take out Azura. That kills the dancing in this team. And then we can park Sothis right here. Which... Creed won't be able to reach us and we'll be able to bait leaf Tresir but we will be taking this minus 7 if we do that like if we try to bait off the bat end leaf does hit twice before we counter so he can reach here We could bait Trasir from right here then. One, two, one, two, three. Trasir will not be able to kill us. I mean, instead of Brash Assault, they should have at least given her like Darting Blow or something. But she would be able to attack um, Cronia. But Cronia will bandage her because she will. She's outside of healing tower. And from here. Yeah. So we can from here we can take out Azura and Trasir with Cronia. And then Hrid we can take him out with Altina. Everyone else should be able to fall to Sotis, so we can bring team one. Actually, no, let's bring, yeah, we can bring this team, that way we can give buffs, and we have a dancer. Yeah, I don't think we need Nils. Yeah. Alright, so... Sothis and Altina Prime will be on this side. And you guys will be on this end. Go here. You can destroy this one. You can destroy this one. And... I can dance you from here. And go destroy this, okay. Yeah, yeah. So take this out. Consider it done. Take this out. I'm with you. Mm, I guess we do need. With utter certainty. All right. My trust. A fine we can just move slowly this way. Alright, do this. Dance Cronia. Panic Miner of 60. Yeah. 
So we should get panic then. But 16 defense. 26. 6 and 6 is 12. And 30 is 42. We'll be at 52. Okay, so we should still be fine. Alright, and then we start moving this way. Mm, we could even take this. Yeah, because you can't reach anything. That work and now we should be able to kill you okay. nope yeah, yeah. You have my trust how oh, we miss some kill by one all right there are traps right there and I don't know which one is which We need six more attacks, so technically. Consider it done. We okay. Oh yeah, we don't double, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Because we have debuffs, we don't double. And then this hardy berry might actually come into play. So, if I put Sothis over here, over here, I can draw the leaf safely, and you reach one, two, three, and you can attack over here. So if I move Cronia out of there, I, yeah, so let's not play with the heat. Yeah, we missed the kill by one. Because so what? How do you double us? She doesn't actually have any debuffs. So is there a drive speed or something? Am I missing something? Because you only double if there's a penalty. And she doesn't have a penalty and you only have 13 speed. You have my trust. She has 15 speed. Must be missing something. Okay. Alright, so here comes Hudid. Yeah, that's why I didn't just want to thank him multiple hits from Leaf and others just because I knew he would do a lot of damage. Alright, so this time you have my trust. Altina can finish you off. I guess we could just put you here. Consider it done. I see. Cheer. You have my trust. Do that. Okay. And do this.
and this is turn what? Turn five. Okay. With utter certainty. Time to kill. A time to celebrate. Guess we just move forward. All we need to do is avoid the trap. get the kill. Mm, that's it. Not a difficult map but definitely have to be watch out for Reed and um, Leaf. So this puts us at 3,927, which is kind of weird. I mean, we we have dropped 120 points on offense because we lost one unit in three battles, and that's 40 points each. So I am actually surprised that we're we're this high. I think this week has been hard for our people then, because for us to be that high with having drawn drop that many points all right so that's it for ether race there is news and that is we know who our next mythic hero is and that is bramimon i'm not familiar with him he's from from what i know he's from fe7 uh, binding blade i think it's. uh but yeah a, this is our first colorless mage and the thing to note about him is his C skill so let's open up the trailer all right so let's actually just get to his skills we went too far okay so right here so let's go over his weapon and his uh c skill everything else you should you're familiar with so first of all his weapon grants attack plus three and a start of combat if foes attack is greater than 50 percent or if a penalty is active on foe grants attack death rest plus five no speed so just attack death and rest plus five and having attack greater than 50 is pretty much a given. Um, in Ether Raids, the only units that you, the only, literally the only units you see below 50 attack are dancers. Like Legendary Azura, which we people either take off her weapon or give her like double fortress death. So aside from like units like her or a Ninian, everyone has above 50 attacks. So this is a pretty easy um, a condition to fulfill. And then it says, at start of combat, so doesn't matter who starts the combat, um, if full speed is greater than or equal to 35 or if penalty is active on four, unit makes a guarantee follow up that. Now, he is a dark mythic hero. So he's a defensive mythic hero. So there are there are units out there that have less than 35 speed. Like Brave Ike, Canagus, um, you know, like Uber Popular Tanks, Brave Ike, Canagus. Uh, it's pretty much of the main big slow tanks that people run. Um, I've seen some people run Brave Hector. 
um you got christmas um uh oh, what's her name roy and lilina's teacher uh cecilia christmas cecilia winter cecilia she's pretty slow so like units like them you won't be able to meet that but it also says or if penalty is active on four which means those units typically have the highest death rest combined so they're usually going to be target of a dark shine so again very easy to meet conditions and it lets him make a follow-up attack then impenetrable dark so this skill is during combat disable skills on all foes excluding four in combat so basically what this means is whoever um you're attacking whoever uh Brahmimon is attacking they're fighting on their own they're not they cannot get any drives wards goads um Caden effect brave lucina effect uh legendary Hollywood um bonus doubler effect so none of the skills uh whoever you are attacking is able to get so for example you're attacking uh brave ike and brave ike brave lucina is probably the number one combo in iterates you will literally be taking out Lucina out of the equation and you're literally just fighting Ike since uh, most likely you'll be able to get your um, double you'll be able to double him you'll attack like normal he will of course still be able to cut the first attack by 40 and the second attack by 80 but that means you're attacking him twice he has a four turn ether he will not be able to get the breath effect from Lucina, so he won't be able to proc either on the first hit or the second hit because that's two points, two from you attacking him and two from him at attacking you for a four turn, uh, four cooldown charges. So, yeah, he won't be able to get his ether. And if there's a dancer for on your team, that dances uh, Brahmimon again, then he'll be able to attack again. But that means Brahmimon is a perfect unit to run Hardy Bearing. Uh, but yeah, he's able to disable a lot of the most powerful uh, Ether Raids supports. Caden, uh, Brave Lucina, um, Mel Corin, uh, Legendary Hollywood. Uh, who else is has really powerful? Mm, basically, those are the main four. Yeah, those are basically the main four that people are gonna be running, that you're most likely to encounter. But you know, uh, so say somebody runs a blue mage with silver goblet and double disengar you're basically taking that unit also out of the equation so it is a really powerful skill especially because he's a defensive mythic hero so not only is he does he have good uh, space kid we don't know his stats yet um, judging by his kid he'll have high attack death and rest and low speed although he might actually not have that bad a speed he might have like 30 base speed to avoid or 31 base speed so if the foe is um uh, has the under 35 he has 35 or more no if he has 35 or less then they still won't be able to double you so that's what i'm going i'm assuming he'll have about 31 speed just to so he cannot get double without getting being able to get his own effect and since 
the enemy won't be able to have drives and skills like that. They'll still be able to have in combat, like push skills, bracing skills, lols. All of these things will still apply in combat. Distant guard. I mean, not distant guard. Distant defense, close defense. All of these things will still be able to uh, be affected. But um, outside help will not be permitted, basically is what it is. So yeah, so I'm. Um, he'll probably have high at high attack. I'm assuming he'll have really high attack, um, moderate defense and rest. Probably around the same number since he both has a def uh, raising in the A skill and a def raising in the B skill. So he'll have those. Uh, let's say he'll have. He'll probably have like. 38 to 40 base attack, maybe 30 to 30 death and rest, and 31, so that's 90, 90, 91, and 38, actually, I forgot, I think he has 39 HP, he has 39 HP, so we'll say 40, 100, 120, so, yeah, like with a 38 attack, it would be like 158, I believe. So somewhere around there it would be, is what I'm assuming his stats will be. Um, but yeah, like having a penalty on the fall on either race is in, while well, you're the, um, you're the defending team, so... Whoever is attacking you on ether raids is very likely for their main tank to usually be taking some kind of debuff. So I don't think his Boyton effect is really hard to get. I believe that it's pretty easy. But again, we'll wait to see the stats and we'll do a more thorough look at him. But let's actually go over the other units in this banner. So, we got Fjorn, Grima, Tiki, Roy, Alm, Mikaya, Camilla, Tresir, Altina, Peony, and last but not least, Mamori. Alright, so this is a pretty good banner uh, if you like mythic heroes because there is a mythic of every color. Dark with um, Brahmimon, Light with Peony, Astra with Altina, and Anima with Tresir. So, and again, they're all different colors. So, it's pretty good if, you, if you're going for mythics. There's a pretty good chance of you being able to pull one of every color. Or one in every color, I guess I could say. Now, probably the best one in this is for someone like me who uses a lot of legendary heroes and mythic heroes, I, it will be probably blue. Um, because he has Peony as a mythic for light. Um, Lucina... I mean, Alucina, Fjorm, and Tiki as legendaries. And you all know I really like Fjorm, so. I, she is a unit that is worth investing, but again, it's a unit that you have to invest in order to make her as good as she can possibly be. So currently mine is plus five. Um, so it wouldn't be a bad thing for me to put on blue. Uh... Next, red is also pretty good with Roy and Altina. Roy being a legendary hero and Altina being a mythic hero. And Mar and Alm. Brave Alm doesn't get a lot of love just because he's a sword infantry unit and people like to say that there's way too many sword infantries. But if you want like a pure nuke, like someone who just 
does one thing, which is destroy whatever he fights, and he does it really well. So Brave Arm is really good at just killing things. Um, on the green side, we have, of course, a Tresir, the bane of many people. Uh, Mamori, which is a really strong green uh, unit. She would probably be better for like arena if you focus on arena, just because armors score high in arena. So, but she's also not bad in ether rates. She do she has really good defenses. She's a sorter type of character with defenses and a weapon like Brave Hector that prevents follow up. So, she's not bad in ether rates. It's just that you have to know that. You have to know how to use armors as your main defense in ether raids. They're slow, like you you if you've seen me use um winter uh sothis, then that's basically how Mamori will play in basically the same role as with this winter sothis. Except Winter Sothis has speed, so she doesn't need anything that guarantees her a follow-up attack, while Mamori will need to run either Benchful Fighter or Special Fighter Quick Repose. And of course, Brave Mikaya. You've seen Brave Mikaya. You see it on many defensive teams. You've seen her in many offense teams. She's really strong. Armor Cavalry Killer in Ether Raids. Offense is really good. And Ground Orders in defense is amazing. It messes you up all the time. And as for colorless, of course, we have Bramimon, which is our new unit. But we also have uh, female Grima, which she is another underrated unit. I have her at plus six. I haven't had a chance to be able to use her because it's been water season for so long. And as long as there's water, I'm going to try to use Fiorma as much as possible. But when it when there's fire and earth only... I tend to rely on her a lot more. So she's she is a good tank in Ether Race offense as an Omega tank, but she does need a lot of help too. You need to be able to provide her drives and buffs and you need to be able to support her to for her to be um do the best job she can. She is colorless, and colorless tanks do have uh, the advantage of not being weak against anything. And finally, uh, Brave Camilla, which is a really powerful unit. You'll usually see her in flyer ball defense teams. She's uh, if you give her restore, and or I think she comes with restore. Um, it's a great restore trap that can initiate combat when the opponent is not ready. <clears throat> initiate when the opponent is not ready to handle your team or they're still setting up. You might be able to catch them with a restore trap or in combat, if you have a flyer ball, she'll just be hopping around, healing everybody. If you have a heal, if you have a dancer as well, and that could help you stall the enemy team or with Razzle Dazzle, get a cheeky kill. So overall, this is not a bad banner. This is... There are units for all types of gameplays. Like I said, there's one mythic hero of every, of every type. There's four legendary heroes. Blue has two of them. So if you like legendary heroes, blue is really good for you. Uh, Colorless does have our brand new Mythic and it does have Grima as well as Camilla, which are really good units. It's just, you know, you gotta know how to use them. Uh, green uh, with Tresir, which is always a really good unit to have. She pretty much uh, makes sure that no dragons are able to run safely on Astra, unless you're like Sothis who. Is not who is immune to dragon weapons, dragon killers. It's the only reason why I'm able to run her as my main tank is because she's 
a boy's dragon killers. But when I run her, I have to be careful of Brave Mikai, which is in this banner because she's in armor effectiveness. So overall, this is a pretty decent banner. I will probably do someone for um may not go too deep into it maybe spend somewhere between 150 to 200 orbs um go summon every color just to see what i get i mean all the units here are units that i can use and even the ones that are mm, may not be too strong for me which are like alm and mamori are still good because I don't have them, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this banner. And that's pretty much it for today. So um, make sure nothing came in. All right, so yeah, that's it for today. I'll uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.